My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. I'm Siwa Beauty Rose Amador LeBeau, and I'm here with my co-host, Craig Pasqua, and we are Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. We have a great guest for you today, a good friend, Manny Moreno. He's been on the show several times, and uh, welcome, Manny. Thank you. Good to be back. Great, Thanks. Manny. Thank you. For our viewers, could you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, uh, I'm an enrolled member of the Texas Band of Yaqui Indians. And it's strange that I'm here today because this year marks 100 years since my family came to uh, Stanislaus County. And so my roots are deep in this area now. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I'm retired now. I'm getting up in age, I hey. guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, my family, both sides of my family from Sonora and uh, uh, now you speak the language, and well, did you teach yourself, or how did you learn it, or did you pass it through the family? It was my grandfather, you know, but I was always ashamed of it growing up. I didn't let nobody else know I could say my prayers in, in the language, because, well, you know, you get back in the 60s and 70s, you get ostracized, you know, I, the kids mm -hmm. would tease you, you don't want to be teased, so when my grandfather would talk like that in the morning to me, I would try to make sure nobody, none of the other oh. kids were around. Because, you know, I just, I felt really weird. And it wasn't until I got older and seen the value in it. Uh -huh. Because I was at a powwow and I went up to another Yaki guy. So, Kichamalea, you're saying Chanya and Paul. And he looks at me like this, because he doesn't know the language. And I said, that's the problem is that being here so many generations now, we lost that language history but I'm the only one in my family that in the last 20 years was able to dig up all the documentation and uh, ancestry stuff that go back to the late 1700s mm -hmm. and I didn't know that the last time and uh, I wrote it in my book I was shocked you know I said my great 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 all the way back uh -huh. That made me realize that I had to make a commitment, and that was to preserve our family history more than anything for the future generations. My nieces and nephews, now that they know I have this, and they know more, it kind of gave them, I seen that in their faces, it gave them a kind of a pride. Mm -hmm. You know that, wow, it was really neat for them. Rich history. My Rich. grandmother was jockey. Yeah. And I didn't know that till probably the last 15, 20 years. Well, we know a lot of people don't know about us, but we fought almost 400 years continuously. It wasn't in, in 1930, the Mexican army purchased 40 airplanes from here, took the worst gas they could get, poison gas, took 10,000 troops to try to stop a resistance of 2,500 Yaquis. We're known historically as a fact, we're the, and it's not to boast, it's a fact, we are the only unconquered Indian tribe in North America. 
we didn't, we're still fighting now with the pipeline. They don't fight over there just to talk words. They kill each other really ugly over there. They dug up the pipelines. <laughs> just <laughs> dug them up together not too long ago, two wow. away. Mm -hmm. So all that history that we fought so long, uh, you know, to get our, 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 our uh, to keep ourselves, because we were widely dispersed. We're the most widely dispersed tribe in, in mm -hmm. this continent. We're in California, our Texas recognition now, we're under federal, Right. we're gonna get that because in Arizona, the Yaquis there are federally recognized. Mm -hmm. Right. And now in California, they're putting up uh, for state recognition too. Really? We have, mm -hmm. a, oh, we wow. have a rich history here in California mm -hmm. yeah. of Yaquis, especially Southern California. Mm -hmm. If you go to the mountains, you'll see Yaqui Gulch, all these names. How'd that happen? Way up here. Well, mm -hmm. we've been around, Joaquin Morieta was Yaqui. Yeah, <laughs> people don't realize he was Yaqui in Mayo. And he came to teach them, help them with the, with the mining, to Placer, to learn. All those things we have contributed in the railroads, especially my grandfathers, were all Southern Pacific Railroad workers. Mm -hmm. They were all retired from there. What happened was 300 families in 1918 migrated here from Sonora and Arizona. They were told at the border crossing, and I wrote that, they were never to speak about being Indian or else they would find themselves in serious trouble. So for Yaquis to adapt on both sides of the border, because there was no border at one time. Yeah. We, we, we were all the way up in Utah, California. We were all over. But what happened was that the, uh, when, when our families came here, there was 300 of them, and they came up through California all the way north. Finding work along the way, they would stop. And that's where they, for the last 100 years, my family uh, has been here. My great-grandmother is buried in Modesto. Mm -hmm. She died in, uh, 52 years old in 1925. Mm. And so my great grand I knew my, my grandfather was born in 1896, and I grew up with him until 1974 when he passed on. Mm -hmm. So I, I was able to be around him. Oh, that's great. My grandfather, I, I mean, there wasn't a day where I would rush home from school and I would run to him. I always wanted to be around my grandpa. He always told me, uh, never be ashamed, never be embarrassed because you're Indian. But in school in them days, even the history of California natives here, we didn't know they were California Indians. It wasn't in the history books. Mm -hmm. And anything about being Indian, we'd go to the movies or TV, <laughs> and you know, I mean, one guy with a single shot kills 20 Indians, how do you do that? I mean, <laughs> you know, John Wayne movies, but right. <laughs> when I grew up, I became an alcoholic. My dad died when I was 10. He got really drunk and, uh, we couldn't find him for three days. He went under, under a drainage pipe in the canal. Oh, Ten years to the day, my grandfather, his father, we couldn't find him for three days. And he was next, parked in his car. He was dead out in the country. Mm. And 10 years after that, on the night of my grandmother's rosary, and my mom was in the hospital dying, I went and got drunk. And I hit a car, boom. I was mm. a few feet from my father died. And that's when I realized, you know, this is a tradition alcohol. It's killed a lot of my family. A lot of native people. My grandfather went to LA and this one we didn't have no cell phones. He went to see one daughter we hadn't seen in ten years. And he had another one in Merced. They were both dying of cirrhosis. So when he got to L.A., barely in time to see his daughter, had to come back, but she was already dead. Mm -hmm. Alcohol has done a, a horrible thing. And that's one of the things I try to, I can't understand when we go to, uh, not so much in the Indian world, but in, in the Chicano world too, because that's how I grew up in that environment. It was a whole, it was a whole, di it was a whole different world. I mean. Either you buckle up or you, <laughs> you're out there survive. somewhere. Yeah, you yeah, don't survive. And I was a little guy, you know, but my cousin would tell me, 
something. You don't fight that guy after school, we're going to get you. So, you know, wow. grew up that way. But it, in them times, it wasn't good to talk about being Indian. I think it wasn't until the movie Little Big Man came out that we saw that. And uh, boy, that fired us up, you know. It really just it upset us so much because we didn't know none of that. The only thing we knew about Indians was at the movies. Really, there was nothing in school, little things in, in the history. It's all negative, huh? Yes, and so I was ashamed all the time. I became an alcoholic. I said, there's nothing good about us as a people. We're no good. We don't, what are we contributed? We're, 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 we're going through all this history where they ripped off kids, putting them in boarding schools. The people had to uh, spread out just to survive. They, they, wanted, they tried to commit genocide against the Yaquis. They took 300 and put them in one church, and I, I'm trying to remember the name, and burned them alive. Hmm. They did atrocious things to, I think the Yaquis have been treated more cruelly than more, probably any of the other tribes. And probably because we were so stubborn, we, we would not give in. So we've maintained our sovereignty in, in, a, in a Pascua, in, Arizona, our federal tribe there, they weren't forced under. They convinced Congress that we'd been here longer than Columbus had ever been mentioned. We're an ancient tribe. We're not just something that came around a few hundred years ago. We go back five, 6,000 years with our history. And so it was important for me to, to get out of my alcoholism. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. And in this elder, the second book, what leads me to this is that when I met these elders, I was in my 20s. I didn't know nothing about the Sweat Lodge, uh, Native American Church, you know, none of those things. And those elders saw something in me, I guess, and uh, boy, were they hard on me. <laughs> they were tough. Harry Jack and, and all them were really hard on me. But if it hadn't been for the elders to teach me that we come from a people we have nothing to be ashamed of. Because of the treatment that we received, we're still here, we kept our dignity, we kept our pride. We haven't been completely thrown to the side. And we can't let ourselves be like that. My thing was to, to write books for the young people, mostly, and in my book here, is to show how I went through that growing up period. It was just a really hard life for me. I was, I mean, I tell people, if you've seen all the scars I got on my body, you say, boy, where did you come out of? You know? <laughs> it, just, it was, I, I really was trying to self-destruct. Not commit suicide, just, 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 your to, actions, just, huh? just, just the rage of anger. I hated, I hated myself. When I did these books, like I tell people, they're not blockbusters, they're not nothing, but. It's something to be proud of. Let me just let the audience know yeah. that. Manny is an author. He, he has written three books. This is the first one, The Bridge is Gone. Right. And this was the first book you write and you wrote. Yeah. And then you wrote The Elder. Yeah. And The Elder is the one you're talking about right now. Yes. Um, and The Elder, they're, they're great books too. And th I guess this one is out of publish, a publication right, now. Get some new ones now. Right, and The Elder is still uh, available. And, but it, Manny just came out with a new book called Scared. Scared, coming full circle. Scared, this is a... Uh, it's got 342 pages. Yeah, this is a, this, they're all great books. The reason I wrote mm -hmm. that little, The Elder, was uh -huh. because most people don't read, and I wanted the ones to read, so I wrote this so it wouldn't bore them, you know, it just, mm -hmm. I wrote that little like that, so a lot of people could uh, just pick it up and sit at a, and time. What's, so what's in this book? That's top? my life story. Okay. And, and I talk in the beginning. I started that book 30 years ago. Wow. But I could never. So you started this one, then you did these, and you went back to yes. this one. And I, when I went back to this one, is the day I was coming here, uh, this year, or last year. Uh, it was last year. I was out of work, and I said, you know what, I'm not doing this, and I gotta finish this book. So I did it, and on the way up here, the last time, I ended up going back into an emergency. And they told me, call my family, he says, uh, we can't save them. You know, 
he's probably going to die. And so I, when they told me that, I was okay with it. I said, well, do what you can then, you know? What was I going to do? Mm -hmm. And so I guess it wasn't my time. And uh, You had I, to finish the book. Yeah, <laughs> I had to finish the book. And, and in there I have, for my nieces and nephews, kind of, as I'm going, I'm introducing my dad and my mom. You know, it was hidden from us. All this heritage was hidden from us. I guess they wanted to spare us the, the sadness of what they went through. I can only imagine, I mean, them coming here and they're told they can't be Indian. You're told you can't be who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is that? Exactly. Possible? And they're doing that now. Uh, that story is just so resonates with um, natives all across the country here. Yeah. And they all have that story. Many of them yeah. share the same story as you do. But you're doing something now. You're working with kids now right. to, to instill pride and show them the way. And um, you're working with kids now. Well, I worked nine years in San Joaquin County Probation. I worked on the gang unit for nine years. Oh, you did? Yeah, I worked there nine years. I know the gang mindset. I know the gang movements. I know the way it works. A lot of those guys, you know, uh, I think it was in the first eight years, uh, at least 30 young people were killed gang warfare. Mm. When I was in Stockton running around, there was two major gangs, and uh, between the two of those gangs, in three years, they had 35 killings. <gasps> These were all young kids. Oh, how sad. If you go to the prisons right now, which once in a blue moon I go with Hector and them to do the sweats. Mm -hmm. You got lipers in there, you got, I mean, there's so many dark brown people in there, you know? Brown people all over the prison. And, when you think about what got him there, there's a lot of things, but a lot of it's alcohol and drug related. Mm -hmm. Because you don't go shoot somebody when you're sober. That's, they shoot you when they're drunk and loaded, you know? And so you got all these problems in our youth, and nobody's gonna take care of them unless we do. They're not gonna take care. The poor, nobody helps poor people. It takes the poor people to help poor people. And if there are kids and your kids why are you depending on someone else to take care right. of it? I'm tired of that, you know? And I hear these so-called leaders running around. I said, get out of the way. You're gonna help or just move, you know? Let us do the work, let us try, let us do something. If I'm gone, at least I left something. It may not be a lot, mm -hmm. but it's a history of who we are now. You know, people talk, uh, I think it was John Trudell, I like what he said. In fact, the night before he crossed over, he wrote me a letter message me. Mm -hmm. He says, Manny, don't let the crazies get to you. And I, that's when I broke away from all those Facebook groups and I said, mm -hmm. it's all talk. Yeah. It's all ego tripping. We're going to help these kids. My belief, and I, I hold fast to it, it's not religious. It's, uh, I believe in the power of prayer. I, I really do. Because when we get together and we pray for each other, it makes us stronger. Uh, the ceremonies and all those things are good, but that's not what, it's, it's our choices we make too, what we want to do with our life. I could have kept on going drinking, but I stopped 22 years ago. Had I kept drinking, I would not be here today. I know, because I was already bleeding everywhere. Mm. I've had an accident where I had my guts in my hand. I've had stab wounds, I mean, Whew. And, I'm, and for some reason I'm here, I'm thankful now. And so every day I wake up because of Harry Jack, I don't care what was going on bad. I would look at Harry and think, man, this old man's crazy. Thankful. He'd always go like that. Thankful. <laughs> Harry, we just, look at all the mess that's going on. Don't worry about it. Thankful. And I kept going. Boy, it took me years, and now, when I wake up, the first thing that comes out of me, just the first thing now, thank you for another day. Yeah. Just that simple. Life is not a hard thing, it's just we make it hard on ourselves, and I did it to myself. I don't put the blame on nobody. I, I did whatever I did in my life, uh, with the bad choices I made. And that's the big thing that young people need to hear from us, is, is the choices we make. 
you know, we were talking earlier, we're getting older about our health, Craig. Mm -hmm. And I remember the old people listening to them when they would gather. Mm -hmm. They go, hi, how are you doing, Mary? I'm good, my liver hurts, I'm this, I'm that, but I'm okay. They were all talk like that. And I go, dang, they're always talking about their ailments. I remember that too. Remember that? When I first started my job, yeah. I used to think, gee, that's all, that's all they talk about. You know, my back hurts, yeah. this hurts. Now I, I find myself talking to my friends, uh, I think I sound like them. Yeah. Well, that's how I was talking to Craig. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting diabetes, I'm doing this and that. Well, they were right, though, uh, how we treat our, our bodies when we're younger, it'll catch up to us. You know, a lot of the guys I grew up with were heroin addicts. Yeah. I, I, so what, that's the only thing I put in my book. That's the only thing I never touched. I didn't like the idea of putting a needle in my arm. You know, it just didn't, it didn't seem right. And then all the guys I grew up with, they were always like this. Hey, how you doing, Manny? What's up, man? And I go, geez, I'm gonna go to the bar and get a beer. I mean, this is crazy. Just sitting around nodding out. Yeah. But a lot of them now, I look at them and, and in fact, I got one friend right now. Uh, he's on fourth stage cancer. So a lot of that t health issues are in the Indian community, Indian world. When Beaver started Three Rivers Lodge, he could not get Indian health to help him because they didn't look at alcohol as a health issue at the time. It took white people and them to help him get the grants. And he always talked about it. You know, it was our own people who didn't want to help us. And that's a lot of what goes on too, is there's so much jealousy and in, I've never met so much jealousy and, I, and if I'm complaining, it's good they listen out there because I've been around different reses, different places. Uh, and whenever that kind of element is in that, it destroys the whole community. Mm -hmm. I've told people, you wanna know how your community is, look at your children, look at your spiritual leaders. If they're not right, and the kids will kind of tell you how things are around you, then it tells you where you need to look at it and work on it. Because the kids would, if you go to the big city, LA, I was there for a while, and uh, back in the, in the young days, Pacoima and them areas, even the babies were growing up to be gangsters. Even the babies, were, that, was, that was their whole once they got five or six years old, they already had their little puppet, little puppet names or whatever, you know. They were already geared not to go yeah. to college, to go to prison. To go to prison. And if you look at California, the native rate in the prisons here for ethnic group, natives have the highest, one of the highest incarceration. Per capita, right? And, and they're yeah. really just some, most of them are minor crimes. But when they get on parole, a lot of these guys up north, it don't take much for them, for them to get relocked, to get locked up mm -hmm. again. So all those things we have to look at now because we're going into, well, it's, I, I'm at my age now, uh, there's other generations coming up and they got more challenges than we did to face. If nobody at least puts an effort to, to try to reach them, then it's not going to be no one's fault but ours, you know. Uh, well, I think it has a lot to do, as you said, with pride in yourself yeah. and and growing up not having that pride right. and being told you can't do it, and you know. And I think by the books you've written that can really <clears throat> inspire kids, you know, that's such a big. Uh, help to the kids and a blessing that and, and and if you're interested in getting one of these books you can contact Manny for more information Mr. Manny MR Manny Mr. Manny here at AOL.com you and I must be the last ones on AOL <laughs> oh, <laughs> nobody's oh. on AOL but us <laughs> oh, but yeah. it's Mr. Manny here that's M R M A N N Y H E R E at AOL.com. So we're still on AOL. <laughs> we're the last of the AOLers. You still have but those discs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually the, I do have one. <laughs> the, the, the floppies. <laughs> that they used floppies, to have everywhere yes. you went. Yeah. But um, this, I, this is the latest book, Scared. This I, is I've given, uh, sent uh, like a whole stack of these to the prison. Oh, that's and, wonderful. And, and to the youth authorities. I've been sending those, just giving them to them. Mm -hmm. I tell oh, people, I don't make no money on my books. These are, uh, I've given away more than I've sold 
for a hamburger or something on the road, you know? Mm -hmm. But as long as it, it's made it to Lillian Valley in there, she's my mentor for writing. Her mentor won the Nobel Prize in 1984. Wow. The Polish writer Milos mm -hmm. Szleswal. Mm -hmm. So when she, they paid her to go up to the Sorbonne or something like that in France, Sorbonne, and she took a bunch of these books. She says, your books, I made it to Lithuania. Wow. 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 And I said, wow, that's pretty good. So they, they made it to Australia, and there was New Zealand or something like that. Well, tell Steve to take it to Germany with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Uh, it's a, they're, the, they're great books, great reading, um, very educational. Yeah, uh, there was, can I see that book for a second? I want mm -hmm. to. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, but I would uh, recommend, highly recommend that you pick up one of these books because they're just fantastic. Uh, well, I can't think right now in my head. Well, I was interested to hear that they have sweats in prisons. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they can do. do that. I didn't sure. realize that. Oh, yeah. Okay. They have powwows yeah. in prisons, too. They, yeah. yeah. Freddie Short and them were kind of instrumental in ha mm -hmm. helping to, uh, do you know Freddie Short? Yes. Okay. Oh, I do. <laughs> he, he, uh, he's one of the guys that helped start that in the uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have spiritual, uh, I guess, spiritual chaplains. Or, or hmm. Right, they do. Okay. And I know the local um, Hector? Uh, Aztec dance group, Capoli, here, Don Alake, goes into the prisons and they dance in right. there for the different okay. power. Well, they got sweat leaders now at every prison. They even right. have, they have women sweat leaders now in uh, Chowchilla. That's Sherry. Hector San Quentin, Mike Herman, and them are in. Uh, DBI. Well, I think, you know, having that at least gives the people there a sense of identity and they can relate to someone on the outside and their own people. Thank you so much for being here again, yes. Manny. And yes. I guess Thank we'll you. have you here when you get your next book out. Oh, it'll be out pretty soon again. All right, okay. we got it. Thank you, Manny. Okay, don't forget I, I got up to this, Manny, and I said, ah. <laughs> Mr. Right. Manny here at AOL.com. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. We'll see you next week on Need a Voice TV?